Welcome everyone and thanks so much for, <clears throat> for taking part in this webinar. Uh, before starting, uh, let's check out that the audio is working properly. Could you please raise your hands to confirm? Okay, good. And uh, could you uh, also raise your hands to confirm that you can see the presentation? Okay, good. Okay, good. So let's just start then. Uh, I'm I'm Oscar Ramirez. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Startup Commons Global, and hope. All of you and all your uh, relatives and, and friends are good in this difficult moment we are living. Uh, today, we are hosting this webinar as part of uh, different actions we are taking to uh, contribute towards helping people navigate this complexity. Um, a Startup Commons mission is to scale innovation entrepreneurship globally uh, via ecosystem development and digital transformation uh, with a target to accelerate the startup ecosystem development globally and uh, with long-term vision to connect and enable data flows within and between startup ecosystems uh, globally. Um, Two weeks ago, uh, we decided to, to open and make all Startup Commons online innovation, entrepreneurship, e-learning curriculum courses globally available for free uh, to create an opportunity for anyone from anywhere in the world to be better prepared for the positive opportunities during and um, after this pandemic. And uh, very recently, uh, actually, it was yesterday. We have also launched the co-development of the Growth Academy curriculum as open source. Um, we are also working on a digital and holistic solution for ecosystem development too, uh, which is purely focused on removing ecosystem fragmentation and enabling uh, data flow among ecosystem actors. Uh, developing an ecosystem is, I would say, much more than getting to know a startup's investors uh, relationships. It really requires um, a wider view to, to help you uh, understand the connections, to, to understand the relations and impacts of various actors, actions and policies. And policies. Um, being that the reason why connecting all the dots is, is key. Uh, a Startup Commons digital approach is all about making the transition from manual data collection to uh, fully automated by standardizing ecosystem data, enabling data flow and incorporating technologies like APIs, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, serverless, etc. Uh, and when working together, all these elements are able to uh, to give more real time and accurate responses to the questions that really matter towards knowing your ecosystem performance, what, where, and why to improve. So, in a nutshell, it shows uh, ecosystem intelligence. We we really believe that. Uh, Mm, by putting all these things and, and everyone working together, we can achieve uh, more with less and faster. And together, uh, we can help to start preparing people to new normal and towards rebuilding the, uh, the economy by producing more startups and more uh, innovative companies. 
Uh, the webinar today covers a topic that is common for all entrepreneurs, startups, SMEs, and corporates. And the cash flow topic is the first and more, uh, I would say, objective indicator to, to check when things go right or wrong in a business. And uh, especially uh, during a crisis, uh, when there is a lot of uncertainty that requires a lot of uh, understanding of the situation, flexibility, and right steps to reach the, the end of the tunnel. So today we, we have a Startup Commons advisor, uh, Joko Habeneinen, who is going to share with all of us some of his own learning tips and ideas of the topic matter as a serial entrepreneur globally. Uh, Joko, uh, let me give you. Um, sorry. Um, Okay. Yes, I am here. Can you, Oscar, hear me? Yes. Thanks so much for, for your virtual presence here today with us. I know you are super, super busy this week, and I personally appreciate you taking your time with us. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, if you still can get the presentation back so that we can start, yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, a little bit about my own background so that I have started many companies and I have been also uh, involved otherwise in many startups and uh, uh, SME companies so that uh, the cash flow management and all issues linked to that is, is something that I have been, uh, I, I have uh, basically followed in many companies and it has been many, many years one of my favorite topics to talk with many people in the startup startup or SME management because I feel that it's it's so important but of course in uh, this situation it's even more important and now when we have surprises all the time we must basically be ready to act all the time and and basically take care of the cash flow uh, so let's go for the next slide uh, so basically what we are going to talk today is, uh, uh, I would say, no miracles. So that, uh, as, as we all know, there is one, no one single solution that how you basically get money in this kind of situation. And uh, it's always a combination of many things, how you can manage your cash flow. And uh, of course now there are different kind of uh, special sources also to get money in this situation. But today we focus especially what kind of tools and processes you could use that you know better that what is the cash position and then you have better time and uh, opportunities basically to take things to your control. At the moment, many things are outside our control, but basically more we can get to our own control, it is easier to manage also uh, the situation and uh, uh, prepare for different kind of scenarios. Okay, let's go for the next page, uh, one more. So that the first question is that why this is so important? Uh, first of all, it's, it's uh, basically, I would say, maybe the most important tool for a small company management that you know all the time, what is your cash position? It's, it's basically very fundamental information, how you can lead your company. 
And of course, it itself cannot solve your problems, but it can give you tools and information and time that you can better manage the company. And especially in this kind of situation, it's very important to understand the situation and be able to act early enough and basically have also time to look for different kinds of options. These are difficult situations often, often, for example, if you see that you, you start, start to run out of money, but more time you have uh, to prepare for that, typically more opportunities you have to find also the solution. The next slide. Uh, and as I said earlier, it's always important. It is not only in this situation, but of course in, in special situations, it's even more important. And uh, at least you should know your gas position, I would say three, four weeks uh, uh, forward. But uh, I, I would say that uh, in, in most cases, it is important that you understand the situation for next uh, three months. And what is really important is that this is not only something that you basically leave your finance person or your finance department or your accounting company. Forecasting your business and basically have idea that how your cash position is going to look in next three weeks or next three months actually need much more information than what you have, for example, in your accounting and in your finance systems. Basically, it requires very good understanding what's going on in your business, how you see the customer cases, how you see basically uh, sales cycles, uh, how you see the ongoing projects and so on. So that it's something that you need basically information from all parts of your company and then you need basically uh, also insight basically to put all this information together. The next slide. Uh, then I have seen many, many times this comment that, uh, that for example, the CEO of the company is saying that, uh, that we just uh, basically collect the cash flow forecast from our accounting system. It, it doesn't typically work in that way. In accounting system, you have a historical information. You can see that what has been your cost in the history, what has been your revenue in the history. And in some cases, it might be the same in the future, but it is not guaranteed. And especially in this kind of situation, whatever has been your revenue three months ago doesn't say anything what will be in the next three months. So that it's really so that basically the whole management, sales people, uh, finance people, marketing people, and also the CEO must work together to get the best understanding, what is the outlook and what you can really expect. And also very important to be very realistic so that you don't only put numbers what you hope to happen, but numbers that you really expect to happen. And then you basically plan your business and all activities based on that. Next one. And it's always uh, the best estimate what you can do. So that uh, it's easy to say that you don't have enough information and it's always so that you don't have all inf information about the future but you must make some assumptions. You must basically put your best estimate and then basically also update the information all the time so that when you have put some numbers, it is actually very important learning experience also that for example, if you put some numbers in, in the last week and now they look totally different, 
it's also important to analyze why they look now different. Is it something that you could have uh, known all already a week ago, or is it something that was a total surprise? So that when you make this kind of systematic work, you can really become better to make excellent estimates. And of course, there are differences uh, between different components that something like fixed salaries, it's easy, easy to forecast un until you make some changes. Also, a recurring revenue is easier to forecast than, for example, some potential new customer projects. But it's also important to remember that a recurring revenue in the past is not guaranteed in the future. The next one. And let's go then to how part. This is uh, actually one Excel or Google spreadsheet that uh, uh, we actually created the original version of this. Uh, I think that's something like 12, 13 years ago in one startup company. And uh, it's very basic model so that it is not rocket science. It is not inside uh, any fancy finance management system. It works in Excel or it works in Google Spreadsheet. And the main idea in this one is really that you put together uh, expected revenue and expected cost. And you make it on weekly level. Uh, weekly level is typically a good compromise because once uh, basically monthly level is typically not enough when you must understand also the timing that when you get money in, when you are able to pay some invoices and so on. But at the same time, sometimes or quite often, if you try to keep it on daily level, uh, it's, it's uh, too complex and too much work. So that typically you can ma manage your cash flow on, on the weekly level. Then of course there are situations that you must pay something on Monday and you get money only on Wednesday, but typically if, if, if you see that the, uh, the cash position is very thin, then, then you can anyway on the weekly level also prepare for that. And another important point in this model, what we have used now in many startup companies is that uh, we, we have basically categorized uh, a revenue to different uh, uh, basically uh, probability classes so that there are some revenue that we, we can really expect to come when it is based on the existing agreements. And then there are something that we expect to happen even if it is not guaranteed. And then there is more uncertain revenue, for example, about new customer projects. But we, we actually come back to some details of this. But this is just to illustrate that it's, uh, it's not too complex that you can quite easily uh, create this kind of uh, Excel sheet and basically start to collect the data and then maintain the information there. And then you can see that how your cash position is developing, how much uh, revenue you, you can expect, how much uh, cost you can expect and, and what is your basically uh, cash position in each week. And we, we actually a little bit talk with Oscar also that maybe we can make this tool also available somewhere uh, at uh, uh, Startup Commons uh, resources so that, uh, that you could also see it. But, but Os Oscar can handle it later, but, but I, I'm, I'm now going to summarize some of the key points that, that are relevant in this one and in, in any similar tool, but you can do also yourself. The next one. Then when we start to fill uh, these tables, uh, one easy point is fixed cost. So that you have salaries, you have rents, you have some service subscriptions, maybe cloud services, uh, maybe some other services you need, for example, in, in your daily business and, and in your operations. Then you have certain taxes, some employee expenses and so on. So, so that basically these are something that it's very easy 
uh, to forecast them uh, based on the historical data and, and what are the actual numbers. Then we have the variable cost. And uh, sometimes they are easier, sometimes more difficult to uh, uh, predict. But one, one way to look at this is that you can look also the historical cost and see that, for example, how much you typically have had variable cost, something like travel cost, something specific for certain uh, projects, uh, uh, and if, if they are, and, and also to see that if there are still some additional costs that you haven't even thought. It's anyway very important that you make your estimate very realistic so that you don't, uh, uh, you don't hope that the costs are much lower in the future than they have been in the past until you make some very clear decisions that you cut some cost. Then there, there might be also some costs that are actually linked to your customer project, so that maybe you use third-party services, contractors, or some materials what you need basically in your projects, so that they are basically also mandatory costs if you are going to deliver those things to customers. And, uh, and uh, in, in that way, they are different category than some internal costs that, uh, that are easier to cut. So that uh, the first point when you start to, to make your forecast, start with fixed cost and then go to the uh, variable cost. And if you are not totally sure about the variable cost, maybe, maybe you can calculate some buffer that there might be some, uh, let's say 5% or something of the total cost that are some some something that you have needed typically in the history so that it is better to be in the forecast also. The next one. Then we go to the uh, revenue numbers. And uh, in, in this Excel model, what we have, we have typically divided revenue to three categories. One is guarantee. And actually, I come back to this because in reality, nothing is totally guaranteed. Then we have likely revenue, and then we have uncertain revenue. So that we have basically made a model that, uh, that we can select in this uh, uh, spreadsheet that which scenario we use. So that uh, we can see that uh, how the cash flow look like if we only take into account the guarantee revenue. So that then we, we expect that that is a kind of minimum revenue what we get. And we can see that if we run out of money or what is the position uh, in, in the future based on that. Then we can add the likely revenue, then that, uh, that let's say that, uh, and, and we have also additional sell here actually to put the probability to likely revenue. So that for example, we can put 30% so that uh, the calculation take 30% of the likely revenue into account in the cash flow forecast. So that uh, then, and, and we can utilize also historical data that what has been our uh, estimates in the history and what has been the actual, actual outcome. And based on that, we can estimate that, uh, for example, if they are new sales or new cases, uh, that what, what is typically the hit rate and how much we uh, believe to, to actually happen. And then we, we have also the uncertain part and, and then we can see also that what could be the best uh, position if all these guaranteed likely and uncertain happen. And for uncertain, we can also put that for what, what, what is the uh, uh, person we expect to realize. So that in, in that way, the tool, what we have used gives quite a lot of flexibility to play with these numbers. Of course, the difficult question is then that which scenario 
I should use in reality and also what kind of uh, likelihood persons I should put. Uh, but it's something that I cannot give one answer because it is very much depending on your business and uh, also that how you have been able to predict cases in the history. And of course, in this kind of special situations, it might be that the historical forecast uh, uh, don't work anymore. The next one. So little, little bit more about these categories because this is really important. First of all, nothing is absolutely guaranteed. So it means that even signed agreements are not guaranteed revenue. It's guaranteed only when you see the money. And what we can see, for example, in this kind of situation, that some of your clients also run out of the money. They are not able to pay the invoices, even you have existing agreement. Maybe they go to bankruptcy and you don't get money. So, so that it's, it's good to understand that uh, nothing is totally guaranteed. Then, of course, you can make estimates that, uh, for example, depending what kind of customers you have, that what is the probability that they are okay also in this situation and they are able to pay. And then maybe you can also categorize, for example, your customers to different classes that what is their business situation at the moment. And, and you can take this into account in your forecast. So that in the end, it's always about probabilities and it is about different scenarios. So, so that you can make different scenarios that, uh, that uh, you, you can then basically uh, make evaluation which scenario you believe, but then you can make also uh, some planning that if the outcome is the worst scenario, what you can do in that situation. And if, if you have thought it also early enough, it also helps you to act if you can see that the worst scenario really start to happen. And it's also risk management. So that, uh, for example, more customers you have, basically it decrease the risk. But of course, if all customers are, for example, in the same industry sector, that let's say all your customers are airlines or travel companies, most probably at the moment, all of them have some issues. The next one. So here I have listed some ways how you can categorize your uh, revenue. One is recurring revenue and the other one is non-recurring revenue. Uh, recurring is in normal situations much easier to predict. But again, now, depending what kind of customers you have, it might be that some of them are not able to continue with your services or they are not even able to pay even they have used your services. I actually just, uh, I, I, I saw for example numbers from one venture capital company when they had estimated uh, what happened for their portfolio companies in 2008 and 2009 after the finance crisis. There were some, for example, cloud-based or software service type co companies that basically had a lot of recurring revenue, but they basically lost 70% of their recurring revenue in two weeks when the finance crisis hit. So that it's just a good uh, reminder that even you have something like software as a service recurring payments that is typically quite safety business. In some situations, it can be also risky. Then of course, uh, uh, you have existing customer contracts or new contracts that have been signed so that uh, 
they are of course more guaranteed but not totally guaranteed and then they are only let's say some talks or promises from customers and uh, un, un, until they sign and start to pay uh, you cannot uh, totally count on them then you have also historical evidences that what kind of customers are more stable what are the typical sales cycles also you know your own salespeople that some of them make a lot of promises and some of them uh, also keep their promises so that these are a kind of things that uh, you typically when you have been longer time in the business you have learned also uh, something that uh, what what is the accuracy of 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 different kind of things then you hear also signals from your customers and actually in this situation it's very important to ask also more signals from customers that you understand what is their position you know also that some customers pay in time and then there are customers who never pay in time and you must remind them many times and all these things you must take into account in your realistic forecast it doesn't help you that the payment day of one customer is let's say second day of the month if they don't pay to you typically on the second day they pay only let's say 15th of the month then it's better to put to your forecast in that way of course you can use also some data analytics tools uh, to, to estimate these kind of things but let's say especially if you are a smaller company and if you if you don't have uh, thousands of customers uh, i i would say sales people finance people and also the ceo have their own gut feelings that what is typical what is happening and and uh, and and what what is a kind of uh, realistic expe expectation but sometimes it is good to make some analysis for example that typically how much late different kind of customers pay to you and so on the next one and it is also very basic risk management so that it's uh, it's basically similar as portfolio management in investments that it helps you if you are able to diversify your risk that i have here a very simple example that if you have one customer and you expect to get one hundred thousand dollar from this customer and you expect that the likelihood or propensity of this is 50. so that expected outcome is fifty thousand but if you have 1000 customers you expect to pay 100 to you and likelihood is again 50 for each of them it's again the same expected outcome 50000 but as you can see the the actual actual outcome uh, distribution is very different because with this one customer you either get zero or 100000 with this one, 1,000 customer, you, you can basically get many combinations of these or, or something between. So that in, in that way, it's important also to understand the risk profile of your customer base and the revenue. And typically, if your business depends on one customer, you definitely has, have very high risk with this customer and even even you have one customer who makes you enough money it makes typically sense to get more customers just to diversify your risk next one and timing is really important with money that uh, that let's say that you expect to get a lot of money in May but if you have a lot of invoices to pay in April you need a solution how you handle this uh, let's say that if you must pay your salaries on 15th of a month and 
you get money only in the end of the month. You have a problem until you have a solution how you cover the salary payments and, and, and pay them in time even your money is coming in later. And again, you must be very realistic how you expect money to come to you. In some cases, for example, if you have, for example, a lot of international customers, you must also take into account that it might take one week or even more that you actually get the money to your bank account. And in, in, in some cases, that is also a very significant question because basically the money that is on the way to you, it doesn't directly help you uh, if you must pay something now. Of course, it helps in that way that maybe it's easier to, to find the solution that you get the money for 10 days from elsewhere. But anyway, you must take it into account. And you must also update these estimates at least weekly because uh, situations are changing all the time. We know it now very well that, that, uh, that basi ba basically uh, e even the external market situation is, uh, is uh, often changing daily. So, so that basically you must make updates all the time when you get more information and you have basically better capability to estimate the future. Then you must also, also make, of course, the basic uh, housekeeping for these tables so that uh, if you expected to get payment in the last week and it didn't come, you must remember to move that revenue to the future uh, and, and then try to be again realistic that when you realistically expect to get it. And all this sounds very simple, but uh, I can tell you that I, I have seen these tables in many, many companies and uh, I, I have seen that, for example, when people are busy that they just don't update the tables and uh, there are all kinds of issues that basically they expected to get some payments in the last week. They never, but it didn't come. They, have, they haven't had a time to, to, to basically update the information so that the money is actually coming somewhere in the future and then it is very confusing and so on. So, so that this takes some systematic work to, to keep the information up to date. The next one. Yeah, here we have some, some other uh, tables in, in this, uh, same Excel model, so so that this is just estimate that how how we have, for example, listed uh, customers uh, in the table, and we have also divided uh, the expected revenue from these customers to these uh, three categories: uh, guaranteed, likely, and uncertain. And uh, uh, this is basically a kind of input data. Uh, to get the table of what we had earlier. The next one. Then we have in the tools also this kind of uh, illustration so that you can easily see that how, how your cash position is, is developing. And of course, it's always important to see that if it will be, for example, negative uh, somewhere in the future. But then also that you see that uh, basically how the revenue is developing over the time. The next one. Cumulative revenue is also, this is not directly linked to the cash flow as such, but you can, you can for example, uh, see, estimate that uh, how, how much you, you, are, you are able to make money, for example, in, in the next three months or in this year, and also how much uh, money you have got earlier this year. The next one. And then of course you can collect all, all kinds of other statistics also. And actually, for example, uh, this one, uh, actual versus uh, likely 
means that what has been historically the difference that what has been your expected revenue each month, each week, and what has been the actual revenue. And this is also very useful information because this can help actually use you to see in very simple way that how good uh, estimates you have done historically. Have you expected too much or have you expected uh, too little money uh, and so on. And this helps you also to, to develop your model and forecast. The next one. So that the learning, learning is, is definitely very important part of this. So that you, you must basically follow all the time that how, how things are changing and also uh, see how your forecast have worked earlier. And uh, uh, it takes some time, definitely. Uh, but I, I feel that uh, for each person in the startup management or SME, small, small or medium-sized company management, it is important to spend, uh, spend some time for this and basically uh, understand that what is the position in the business because your investments, your actions, all decisions somehow depend on the cash because it's, it's a really luxury situation that if you are a startup company or SME company and, uh, and you don't need to worry about cash at all. The next one. And then let's go to some conclusions and actions that what we can do with this information. First of all, there is no one rule or rule set. What to conclude? and how to act because it depends on so many situations and aspects in your business. But the starting point is really that you know more and you can expect, expect better what's going to happen. Some companies are okay to have money only for three weeks. Some companies want to have at least for three months. It depends a little bit that, uh, that uh, how, how you have a, have been able to operate. But of course, again, we are now in the special situation and it's, it's uh, very good to have also some extra money in this situation because you, you never know what's going to happen. But of course, each company must make also a decision that how much risk they want to take because the other sign, side of the coin is that uh, more careful you want to be and more uh, money you want to keep, it also then limit your investments. And basically in business, we must also invest and we must also hire new people if we see business opportunities. So that it is basically balance to manage your risk, but also to catch the future opportunities. But at least each company must understand what is their cash position and make decisions that how they want to handle it so that they make decisions based on real information. The next one. I have listed here some scenarios that what can happen with your cash and what to do in that situation. The first one maybe in this situation is not the main problem for anybody that you have too much money. But in some situations, it's also uh, remember that it can be a problem for your business if, if you just keep too much money uh, and you don't invest it, even if you see opportunities. And of course, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's always difficult decision that uh, that uh, what, what is the optimal way to use your money. But especially if you see that your business is uh, growing and you have a lot of new opportunities, then it makes also sense to invest, hire new people, and in that way, get more business. 
and even in this situation, actually this situation might be for some businesses very good time to make a lot of money, uh, even exceptional money, and, and then you must also think how you handle that money, what you get now, and is it something that you can win more business in the future, or is it just better to keep the money now? The next one. Then I think that more typical problem is that, uh, that you, you feel that you don't have enough money. Uh, and there are also different scenarios how it happens. Of course, one scenario is that basically your cash flow is all the time negative, meaning that you basically pay out money more than you get money in all the time. So it basically means that your, your costs are too high or your revenue is too low, uh, but it means it might mean also that, for example, your prices are too low, you cannot cover your cost with your uh, prices, and then you must think that uh, can you uh, uh, increase your prices or maybe uh, change your pricing model, or can you make your, uh, basically your operations or your uh, product more cost effective so that you can basically cut the cost of the product. And in, in that way, uh, basically uh, make, make the product more profitable. Of course, in some cases, it can be also that the problem is sales so that, uh, that uh, for example, you need enough volume of the sales until your product is profitable. Again, it would be really important to analyze this little bit more and understand that what is the problem? That is it something in the product? Is it something in the sales? Or is it something in your other fixed cost that basically have put you to this position that your cash flow is all the time negative. Because very different actions are needed depending what is the ultima, ultimate uh, reason for the problem. The next one. Then there can be also surprises and your cash flow goes down as now happened for many companies. Next one. So, in, in this kind of situation, then basically you have had profitable business, but suddenly you see that you cannot sell anymore or customers don't buy anymore or there are some other problems. You cannot deliver your products or your supply chain doesn't work and so, so on. There can be many reasons. And then basically, you must make very fast analysis. What does it mean? You must update all your uh, revenue, all your cost estimates and uh, cash flow forecast. And you must make also different scenarios that the scenario you expect to happen, but to make also the worst possible scenario so that you can start to prepare action plan for the expected, but to have also backup action plan for the worst scenario. And it's always better to act than hope and wait. Time actually matters in this kind of situation. And there might be also some local laws and regulation that actually limit how you can act and what you can do. Let's say that if you need to fire some people, there might be situations that you cannot do it immediately. You need some time and money to do it. And that's why it's also important to act early enough. The next one. And there are still many, many things you can do so that uh, it's important to really could I say, calm down and think what are the options and what you can do. Not panic, 
because panic typically doesn't help. Uh, then it's also important to remember that, uh, that when you think the options, it typically makes sense to at least try or at least to talk, for example, to your customers or your suppliers and, and other parties if, if, you, if you want, for example, make some new arrangements. It's better to ask than uh, a regret. And uh, quite often it is possible to find also flexible solutions. If, if you are open and you tell also about the problems to other parties and, and communicate it well. If, if you just basically stop the communication and you don't pay any more your invoices and so on, typically that causes much more problems. And in the end, this is not rocket science at, at all. It's, it's basically to see how you could get more money and use less money. And then basically very systematically start to think both aspects that what you can do in, in practice. And sometimes it's also good to talk with other, other people, maybe other companies in the similar position or people you know who have been in different complex business situations. They might have also ideas when often when you are in problems, you might be stuck with your own thoughts and, and you don't, you are not very creative then to, to find new solutions. The next one. For example, how to get more revenue. You, you can talk with customers if they actually need something more. Maybe some other products or services what you have sold earlier. You, must, you can also contact all customers with whom you have talked earlier, but they are not your customer at the moment. Uh, if there is anything to do. It's also good to talk with your own employees. If they have some ideas, for example, how to save money, or sometimes they might have ideas that how to uh, sell more and, and make more revenue because they know also the customers and, and they know the products and operations. And sometimes you can even think that, uh, can you sell something else that has demand on the market? Like uh, for example, at the moment, I think that we have seen situations that that for example, when restaurants and coffee shops must close down in many places, that can they still, for example, deliver something or, uh, or, or, or this kind of uh, innovative ways that can, can you anyway make some business based on those assets and competence and uh, resources you have, even you cannot continue your existing business. So, so that in, in that way, I think that the main message is that it's better to try to be creative, open-minded, and talk also with different people, including your customers and own employees, that what could be the ideas, and not only be stuck that what has been your business earlier, and, and think that, okay, we cannot do anything with this existing business. The next one. And then cost cutting is of course one, one way. Uh, and then it might mean that you must fire some people. Uh, there might be opportunities depending a little bit on the situation that, that people are also ready to cut their salaries or, or uh, maybe you can postpone some payments. Uh, now, now there are, for example, situations that uh, in, in many countries that the restaurants don't need to pay their rents during this time. Uh, even, even you can maybe uh, postpone your tax payments now in some countries uh, or pay less social security costs and that kind of things. So, so that it's, it's uh, important also to clarify that what, is, uh, what are the options locally to handle the situation because many governments, many cities, uh, regions, agencies have now also set up different special programs. And it's good to talk also with your tax advisors, lawyers, accountants, that's what kind of ideas they, they have. And, and also the legal aspect that what can be done. The next one. And then of course, get more funding is one option, but it depends really on the, on, on the situation. 
I would say that, for example, go to uh, Go, go, go to find more investors in this situation might be difficult, but for example, uh, get bank loan or something like that might be an option. Uh, and then there are now also special programs to get some money from governments and uh, uh, special programs. Uh, or if you don't get money, maybe you can get guarantees for the bank loans and so on. So, so that uh, uh, basically, these are just examples that how, how you can think, how, how you could make more uh, revenue, how you could cut costs, and how you could get funding. But again, it depends very much on your situation and also, or also that what is exactly your cash position and how much money you need. Uh, but it's important that you have a kind of systematic process to go through all these aspects, not to panic. The next one. So, and, and then this is actually the last page. Uh, uh, this has taken actually a little bit more time than I expected, but uh, uh, I, I cannot cover now all special programs that are available in different countries. But uh, if you go to the internet, you can find actually in most of countries quite a lot uh, special funding, special programs, special ways to support companies in this situation so that it is important to, to investigate what could be available locally. There are also many information sources I, I have listed here. For example, BDO has listed some special programs in different countries and also, for example, uh, McKinsey had, had done some recommendations that what, what uh, businesses can uh, make in, in this situation. So that there are now many sources of information also to, to, to find that what you can do locally. But again, uh, I think that my main message is that start to make very good forecast, the, the realistic expectation, what can happen. And in that way, you get time and opportunities to act. The next one. So I think that we are running a little bit out of time, but Oscar, if, if there are any, any, any time for the question, maybe we can cover something. Yes, thanks, thanks so much, uh, Joko, for, for the talk. It was really, really interesting. Quite often, we, we, I would say that we forget the, the basics. And, and in, this, in this moment, I think they are really, really important. Uh, so. Would you remember this during the, the webinar? So now it's time for, for your questions that you have. We have a few minutes for, for that. So you can uh, uh, leave your questions on the chat. And let's see if we have something. No questions? Okay, so we have no, no, oh yeah. Okay, okay, I, I, I think that, uh, as I said, that this is one of those areas that, that this is not rocket science, but uh, it's, uh, it's important to, just uh, make systematic work and, and basically be ready early enough, whatever happen, because in, in, in that way you can control your business better than, than just hope and see. Yes. Okay, so we, we are getting some feedback from, from the attendees. They are really, really happy with the, with the webinar, uh, but we don't have any questions. Uh, so thanks again for your time, Yoko taking part in this webinar uh, and let's meet in another chance. Yeah, and I think that you make this also avail available online so that I, I hope that people can come back to these things also later. Yes. And, and uh, I, I think that for everybody, I want to say also that, that it makes sense to follow all information from Startup Commons because they are now doing a lot of uh, 
great work to help startup ecosystems and also startups in this situation so that worthwhile to look also those training materials. Yes, so from, from our side at least, of course, we are going to distribute this, this recording to all participants. And, and then, as I said in the beginning, we are building uh, the Open Innovation Entrepreneurship Curriculum. Um, and we will add the, the spreadsheet that you mentioned on the webinar uh, to the pool of resources that we are collecting globally so that everyone can, can use it uh, for their own purposes. So we will communicate everything on our coming communications. So let's be in touch. Thank you everyone for participating. Thank you again, Yoko. Uh, stay safe, stay at home. Bye. Thank you. Bye now.